Okay, so this is supposedly the size of James Hutton's house. And James Hutton was, uh, I'd say, this uh, radical, innovatory geologist. In fact, some people call him the father of modern geology, you know, if you're into that kind of label. Um, <clears throat> so his house stood here, and his study was on the first floor. Uh, and alas, because of the trees, we can't see them, but Salisbury Crags are just over there, you know, this row of cliffs. Um, and so his study must have been looking out over the cliffs. And uh, he was a pro prolific writer, you know, he wrote uh, lots of works of uh, natural philosophy and so on, and works on electricity and things like this. But, um, but presumably, looking out every day at the crags made him decide, you know, I wonder what these, you know, how these rocks came to be the way they are and so on. And so he started thinking about geology and he wrote this book called um, uh, The Theory of the Earth, which is mentioned there, uh, published in 88, was it? 1788. Um, <clears throat> and this quotation here is the final words of the Theory of the Earth. We find no vestige of a beginning, no prospect of an end. Uh, he's the person, the first person to realise that geological ages were incredibly uh, long, you know. In fact, he said time, uh, as, as far as uh, geological uh, processes are concerned, is as nothing, you know, meaning, you know, the time is endless for, you know, whereas time for us is everything, you know, but for geology it's nothing. Um, and of course this is radical in itself because at that time, you know, the people were still going on the biblical you know, um, Archbishop Usher, Archbishop James Usher, the Archbishop of Armagh in Northern Ireland, uh, <coughs> worked out using the Bible, the genealogies of all the people in the Bible, that the world must have been created in 4004 BC. So the world was sort of 6,000 years old. Um, <coughs> and Houghton said no. Uh, <coughs> and he said, um, no matter how you look at the rocks, because his theory was, I mean, that... Um, just briefly, you remember I mentioned Robert Jameson before, you know, who uh, threw away James Hutton's um, uh, samples and so on from the um, University Museum. Um, uh, Jameson was a sort of standard, uh, you know, he had the standard geological view, which was that all rocks are precipitated out of water, like sandstone or mudstone, you know, just settled at the bottom of the ocean, uh, primitive oceans. Uh, Hutton was the first one of the first, anyway, to say that rocks were created in you know, volcano, volcanoes or down in the uh, bowels of the earth where they were sort of molten, and so they weren't precipitated out of water. Um, and he said that you couldn't find, you wouldn't be able to find any evidence of the origins of the, of the earth, you know, sort of to back up the Bible or something like that. You know, you couldn't find that kind of evidence by looking at the rocks because the rocks have been in this endless cycle of being pushed up uh, and then sort of eroded down, melted underground and pushed up again and so on. Uh, so there's this endless cycle. And so that's what he means at the end of the book when he says, we find no vestige of a beginning and no prospect of an end. So we've shown there's no signs either in geology that the world is going to come to an end. Um, and remember I told you that uh, Robert Chambers, his notorious book on evolution was called Vestiges of the Natural History of Creation. He's alluding to this. He's saying you can find vestiges of the natural history of creation, even though James Hutton says you can't find any vestige of a beginning. So uh, it's a nice uh, echo there of uh, two Edinburgh authors. Um,